Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Laura Kiefer speaking. I am the chief gemologist from the Gübelin Gem Lab. And today I would like to take you to a country, Ethiopia, and show you the wealth of gemstones they have here. Ethiopia has been on the map for gemstones really since 2010 with the onstart of the white opal that they found there, followed by black opal, followed by emerald, followed by sapphires. And I take you to some of those places and I show you some of the gems that they have there. This is a map of Ethiopia and the blue lines, the arrows show different gemstone deposits. Now, if we start from the top left, we have in the north, sapphire and beryl. We have in the west, petrified wood. In the south, we have garnet, ruby, chrysoprase, sapphire, emerald, fluorite. And also in the south, we have beryl, tourmaline, petrified wood, peridot, aquamarine, chrysocolla, amethonite, and chrysoprase. And in the north and the northeast, we have amethyst, we have gold, we have the opal, amber, fire opal, sunstone, and blue chalcedony. Now I want to introduce you to our host when we were in Ethiopia on several occasions. This is Tevotro Sinta Yehu. He is from Orbit, Orbit Ethiopia. And um, he took us around to several, at several occasions to several of the mines. His office in Addis Abeba has a workshop. The miners come there with their finds and he is working in the workshop. His staff is cutting and polishing all the goods. There is no treatments in the stones that he is selling. But now we start with a little bit of an overview of what we saw in his office. And the first thing he showed us was a bag of ruby, not the best quality ruby. It comes from the south in, uh, of Ethiopia. Um, but he said that meanwhile they found a few smaller deposits that are very promising. Then we have peridot. We have Zaborite. This is one of the newer finds and it's not very uh, well known yet, but we will see what comes out of there. Then we have Sunstone. Sunstone with a quality that matches the one from Oregon. We have Fire Opal from the East. And we have Chrysoprase which matches the one from Australia. And here you can see a piece of that material, very good, nice green material. There is blue chalcedony, one of the very new finds, and it was first introduced to the trade in Tucson in 2020, in February only. Here a table with lots of the goods that I showed you before, but also aquamarine, the big piece is aquamarine. You see the rubies in the back and you see green amber in the front. In his workshop, he has a few pieces to show. So one of them is this beautiful amethyst and aquamarine necklace. Then here you have in the top row amazonite, you have in the middle amethyst and on the right of in the, in the middle row jasper in the bottom you have aquamarine and you have chrysoprase here are some more chrysoprase amazonite various types of jaspers also obsidian fire opal and green amber he took us first to the opal mines in the north next to the velo white opal. But these mines that we visited were actually black opal. So here is a tour we took. Here is Addis Abeba. And we went the eastern road up. And the bottom is Addis Abeba. We went the eastern road up. And on the, when, when it turns to the west, you see these two green circles. One of them in the south of the road is the yellow opal. And to the north of the road is the black opal. 
Here is the mine site of the white opal, the Vagal Tena, where the Velo opal comes from. And you can see here that there is a sequence of acidic ash layers, and they occur several times within a three kilometer high sequence of basalt. But the precious opal has only been found at the marked position in the stratigraphy, where you can see the arrow. Here is some of the white velo opal. Here is some, and I have another piece to show you. And you can see the reflexes. Very nice material. This is the other side. This is where the black opal is found. By air, it's only 30 kilometers away, but with a car, it's more than 100 kilometers. So here again, you have the horizons, the different horizons, and in the one marked with a yellow arrow, this is where you find a black opal. And this is where we visited. When you go around the corner from this uh, massive, you find another place where they also find a black opal. But this place and the image on the left was a little bit too dangerous, but we did not dare to go to that one. It looks quite quite steep and quite not very safe. So this is at the opal mine that we visited. And you can see here um, the rhyolitic rock above and the clay ridge layer on the bottom and the opal bearing layer is only about 60 centimeters high. You can see those little holes on the bottom and this is where they go in, the miners, and where they find the opal. This is what they get. Very nice material. Again, I have one of those pieces in my hand here and I show you. Very nice reflexes in all colors. And there's more. This is a piece in the left side, which is about 10, 10 centimeters high, and it's solid opal, what you see here. And it's full of these beautiful reflexes. On the right side is a piece that has common opal, and in between it has the opal patches and the precious opal colors. You jump to, to green amber. In Ethiopia, they do find green amber. They find it with a lot of insects inside, and I'll show you a few of the images. It is more in the center of this circle that you see on the left side, closer to Addis Ababa. And it consists, the uh, geology is basalt com columns quite high with uh, limestone layers, and in those limestone layers, that's where you find the amber. Here you find one piece, you see one piece, and you see the green color in there. Here are some more pieces, a bead necklace. The stones have some sort of tindal effect when you hit them with a fiber optic light. And they are beautiful insects inside, very well preserved insects. Now we come to the emeralds in Ethiopia. The emeralds have only been found in 2016. And this is where they were found in the bottom here, where the red, where the red uh, star is. The red star marks the major deposit in Chakiso. The green star was a um, exploratory field from gem fields, but it was in 2018 overrun by rebels and they are not mining anything anymore at the moment. So here is Shakiso in 2016. That's the emerald mining area where the arrow is, so just on the slope of that hill. And this is what it looked like when my colleague Klaus Schollenbruch was there in 2016. It reminds of the sapphire mining camps that they found in Madagascar 
the same amount of people, um, a lot of little huts where they are living and a lot of uncontrolled mining going on. This was it in 2018. Look at the difference. They reformed in 2017 to form cooperatives and they went there with heavy machinery. So they went into the hard rock. Once they have mined the hard rock, they dump it and the miners from the cooperative are searching for the emeralds in that material. That's what it looks like, the rough material. You can see big pieces. You can see very transparent, nice smaller pieces. And you can also see clusters of emeralds. And the inclusions, when you want to see one, some of those uh, in, uh, typical inclusions, uh, it has straight coast zonation when viewed perpendicular to the C-axis. And it has swirly or roiled to hexagonal growth structure when we view to the C-axis, parallel to the C-axis. It has, again, viewed parallel to the C-axis. It has irregular two-phase inclusions. And perpendicular to the C-axis, you see blocky inclusions, two phases, similar to the ones found in Zambia. So here is a specialty. That's one of the special ones that we have not found in any other emeralds that we have seen from any other deposits. There is a bubble in a bubble. So it's a multi-phase inclusion and three-phase inclusions, but two of the phases are gas and liquid or liquid and liquid. And when you heat it up, like in a microscope well to about 60 degrees, one of the bubbles disappear. When you cool it down, it comes back. We have parallel long growth tubes filled either with a liquid or a liquid and a gas, and sometimes with the host material, the yellowish staining. And often they are short, those tubes, and they are terminated by a thin platelet. Now we jump to Ethiopian sapphire. Here you have some rough material from there and it's in the north of Ethiopia. It was only found at the end of 2016. Here are some images from Simon Bruce Lockhart and Andy Lucas. The mining area is in the far north of Ethiopia, close to the border with Eritrea, and it is not very accessible to foreigners. The sapphires there are related to alkali basalt fields. Inclusion-wise, they don't have so many mineral inclusions, but they have the milky banding, hexagonal shape or sometimes triangular shaped, uh, and it reminds of some of the other magmatic sapphire deposits that have stones with these properties, but also Kashmir, Madagascar or Sri Lankan sapphires can have these milky bands. And on the right side, you have one of the rare examples with some mineral inclusions. Good. Now, some impressions of the country. The country is beautiful. And we traveled through there and we had so many impressions at the end that I do want to share some with you. The life on the road. Donkeys, people walking for miles. The little miner on the side, a little boy that was dancing in front of our car, some locals at the Velo Opel deposit mine, a little boy that received some money from us and was super happy about it. The rock church in La Libela. This church is actually carved into the basalt. So the church is made out of the pristine basalt that was there and it's carved in there. The food, that's the typical Ethiopian food. The coffee, the best. Alcohol, honey wine and a hard liquor that I could not drink at all. And the dancing. You can see that they are quite expressive with their dancing. 
some more dancing. My colleague tried it out. He did quite well. And the locals. These are some people at the Velo Opal deposit. The locals on the road, lots of animals on the road. And this is it. Thank you so much and stay tuned, stay safe and stay home. I will have some follow-up podcasts coming, one about the Ethiopian Opal more in detail with an introduction going into the mine. Uh, another one showing you more of the Ethiopian Amber and another one about the Emerald. So stay tuned, I'll be back. Thank you very much.